So the FAIRCOM database is special because it has this general purpose engine under the hood and highly specialized APIs on top that give it special powers for developers to do specific things that are best for the developer. For example, if you're, e if you're into easy development, which I'm a developer, I like easy. So easy is JSON to me. Um, and so the perfect API for me to work in a database is a JSON query language, JSON data, everything JSON over HTTP. Um, it's so easy to integrate into every programming language that I've ever used. So I like JSON. So we designed, being the chief architect of Faircom, we designed a JSON API. So if you want easy, we have an easy JSON API, like MongoDB. Um, if, you, if you want something more flexible and have more powerful and more mature um, because of joins and, and filtering and all those kind of features that a JSON database doesn't have, then that's what SQL's good for. And so, and it's very traditional. If you know SQL, then you need a database that can do SQL. I mean, it, but sometimes you need high performance. And a lot of people choose specialty databases, like you might choose DynamoDB on Amazon, you might choose Cassandra, you might choose Redis. There are all kinds of specialty databases. Um, the problem with specialty databases, they're really optimized, hyper-optimized for specific use cases. What if you need to do a general purpose app? Well, a specialized database like the ones I mentioned are not good for general purpose applications. So um, can you have your cake and eat it too? Or how can you have icing and cherry on top and cake and, and ice cream on the side? Can you have it all? Yes, the answer is if you can create a general purpose engine underneath specialty APIs, then you can have all the above. So that's what Faircom does. And I'm gonna explain how Faircom works. And I'm gonna start with an API I haven't mentioned yet. And this is what I call the record buffer APIs. Faircom has two major APIs that are at the heart of, of its product. And they work at the binary level. And so these are binary records. And when we think of binary, you think of the first thing is an image, like a JPEG or a TIFF or, or a, you know, a GIF or something like that. Um, sure, we can store images in the Faircom database, but, we're, but I'm talking about a binary record, a binary structure for storing structured data, it's data with with columns, data with rows, data in tables, at a, but it's stored at a binary level. And that's kind of a, a unique concept. But the reason why Faircom has this concept is that 40 years ago, when Faircom was started, Bill Fairman, as a professor at Mizzou University in Columbia, Missouri, um, he loved the C programming language, and he wanted to take the B-tree index and build an, AP, build an ISAM API over um, over data. And ISAM was built on the idea of there are records and files and records have fields in them. Um, or in the case of binary, you can have anything in them. So you take the idea of a binary record is you have a file and, the, and a file consists of records. And you stick a B-tree index over the records. And so now you can index segments of the records. Now segments are very much like fields. So you can say the first segment is an ID, the second segment would be a name, the third segment could be a ranking, and so the fourth segment could be a salary. And that could be a list of say athletes, famous athletes in the world. And so you know you could have like IDs one, two, three, four, five, six, and you could have all the athletes in the world in here, and you can put their name, you could have Michael Jordan, you could have Babe Ruth, you could have Muhammad Ali, on and on, all these famous athletes. And then you could say, how are they ranked? And I put them in ranking order anyway, and then salary, okay, Jordan has over a billion dollars, Babe Ruth had over a million dollars, and Muhammad Ali had somewhere in the middle. So I'll just say um, 50 million. I'm doing that off the memory. I'm not sure exactly how much you made. But you can then index multiple indexes. I could put an index over the name. I could put an index over the ranking. I could put an index over salary. And now I can create the data in four ways. I can create the data in the way it's put in the table. I can put it, create it by ID. I can create it by name. I can create it by ranking or salary. And when it's queried by those things, I can look things up very fast and I can sort them. So I can say, give me the data in name order. 
give me the data in salary order. And the way Bill Fairman originally created this using these, this index sequential access method, which it basically index means B tree indexes, which all major databases support B trees. And sequential means you get records in a sequential order, and it's the way you access it, and it's a method. So basically, I'm going to walk the data in table order, or I'm going to walk the data in index order. So if I have an index on name, then I'm going to walk, I'm going to say, okay, I've got, I'm going to index as a tree structure. So I'm going to say I've got records. Um, and then G through M. So I'm, I'm going to break this down into tree and say, okay, I'm going to have records organized. M is kind of in the middle. And so I'm going to say records greater than that would be like N through D and X through Z. Okay, and then I'm going to put buckets in each one of these. And I'm going to say, hey, Michael Jordan is, I'm going to index it by name. So it starts with an M. So he's going to be over here. Babe Ruth is a B. So Babe Ruth is going to be over here. And Muhammad Ali is also an M. So my tree is not very balanced right next. I have nothing over here. But that's okay. Um, the way the records, the way I want to order by, since, since the index treats it in, in index order, it's going to put it in order that you tell it to, and it can sort it ascending or descending. This index, I drew it as ascending. So I got Babe Ruth, Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, and then if we keep adding athletes in the world like Pele, Pele would go here. And if I had a Greek god participating, we'd have Zeus over here on the far end. So now we have famous athletes in the world, plus a god coming, and, and now we have um, we can walk the records in index order. And one thing that Faircom does, it puts a linked list between these buckets. And so within a bucket, it's sorted. So now I can quickly get into a bucket. And once I get to a bucket, I can start walking records. And I can keep walking across the buckets. So now I can go Babe Ruth, Michael Jordan, Mike, Babe Ruth, Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, Paley, and Zeus in order. And the way it works in the ISAM model is I get the first record here. Every record has a byte offset for where the record is in the file. So this is a, there's a byte offset here. So I'm going to make up some byte offsets. So I'm going to say this one's at zero. And I'm going to say this one is at 100. I'm going to keep it real simple right now just um, for convenience. So each of these records, since I added Haley in here, I'll put him in here. And I'll put Zeus in here. So now I have five records, and I'll just put offsets nice and easy, even numbers. Okay, so now I'm going to say Babe Ruth is at zero. Oh, so Michael Jordan was at zero. Sorry, Michael Jordan's at zero. Babe Ruth is at 100. Pele is at, oh, so Muhammad Ali's at 200. And Pele's at 300. And Zeus is at 400. All right, so now when I walk my index, it says Babe Ruth at 100. That is literally bytes offsets in a file. Now, this is, this is really important for performance reasons. There's nothing faster in, in accessing data in a file than jumping to a byte offset. So you open up a file on a file system, and you say, give me, the, give me 100 bytes starting at offset 100. The operating system knows how to do that incredibly fast. It caches it, it optimizes it, and the Faircom leverages, the Faircom database leverages the operating systems. All the operating systems of the world, file systems, are highly optimized, and we leverage them. And so we can jump to these offsets really fast. So we look it up in the index, we find Babe Ruth, it's 100, we go to 100, and we pull the record out and we say, okay, get the record for Babe Ruth first. So we're creating, we're walking the data by walking the index. Now we go next, Michael. Or so Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is, is actually right after that, so we pull him up. And then we pull up Michael Jordan next. It jumps up here. And then we go to Pele, jumps down here to about 300. And then Zeus happens to be at the end, so we just go to the end and get him. 
So we're walking the data in index order, but we're retrieving the records um, as if they were in a table order. But it's not, the, it's not the order they're here in the real table. We're using the byte offsets to look them up very rapidly. And that technology has been optimized for 40 years to be incredibly fast. So what we do, well, I should back up, all databases to some degree do something like this. Um, this the important point is, do they do it simply so it can be fast, or do they get really complicated? And the answer is, databases that have chosen highly specialized engines have gotten really complicated. Just to give you one example of, say, DynamoDB. DynamoDB takes data, and instead of putting it in a single file, it shards it across multiple files, across multiple servers. Now, why would you do that? Because you stick a network in between. Now your network's a thousand times slower than your, than your, your, um, your computer. And so now your whole system's a thousand times slower. So why would you put a network in the middle? Well, if you want to scale to gazillions of records and you want to work in the cloud, and then since the cloud is, each server in the cloud is a virtual machine and each machine is subject to other virtual machines making it go slow, the only way to compensate for virtual machines getting cloud sickness and running slow all the time because they're being hammered by others is to spread the load across lots of virtual machines. So what does Amazon do to compensate for a very bad architecture that has virtual machines spread everywhere um, that slows each other down? Well, let's just spread our data across all of them. We'll average it out and they'll all be consistently mediocre. But if you do that in parallel and you have all these servers consistently mediocre in parallel and you have a thousand of them, well, then you can actually get some pretty good performance. But it's never going to be as fast is on a single machine with a fast file system with CPU, CPU caching, and, in, and RAM. Right? This thing can outperform any database that's sharded because the network gets in the way. But because DynamoDB is sharded and because it can spread across gazillions of servers and do gazillions of records, then you can scale to massive amounts of data and get, get consistent performance. If you want to do that with the Faircom database, you need to run it on a bigger server. That means you have to buy a bigger server. Now, they're pretty cheap these days, so you can argue cost-wise, it's way cheaper to buy a server for $50,000. We have one in our data center, and that thing does a million inserts a second. I, now, I challenge any cloud vendor to do a million inserts a second and under for a $50,000 five-year bill. I mean, $50,000 will last you at least five years. We've had that server for five years. It's still running over another five years without any problems. So for 10 years, that's 5,000 a year. The same thing if you want to pay DynamoDB to go run your database in a specialized engine, spread out everything is going to cost you way more than $5,000 a year. It's going to cost you more than $5,000 a month. You know, it's going to cost you way more money and it's going to not be as fast as what you can do here. And it's not going to be as capable. Because once you spread your data out in DynamoDB key value store, you look up records one at a time. It's really good at looking up individual records because it knows which shard it's on. It says, go there and get it, right? But what if you want to start getting all the records in order? Can't do it, sorry. Um, doesn't work really well that way. Sorry, we didn't build it that way. You know, and that's kind of the answer you get. You try to do general purpose things, you can't do it. So the, um, the, the normal general purpose databases, the engines of the world use this model. And this model makes it more efficient to do anything with your database. You can do transactions, you can do analytics, because it's a model that's been proven to be general purpose. But the Faircom secret is that we give you a low level access to this. Now I'm gonna talk about this. I talked about the principles of, of walking the data of how we store the data. You can walk it by index, you can walk it in table order, um, and you can have lots of indexes. So if I have another index over here, this was just the index by name. If I want to index by ranking, then I'd put numbers here. And if I want to index it by salary, I'd put salaries here. And you can walk the data in those orders. And then not only just walk the data, you can look it up like Amazon Key Value Store. So you can look up the data very quickly with this, but you can walk the data very efficiently. This general purpose engine now allows me to do analytics and transactions efficiently. But, um, and it allows Faircom DB to have multiple APIs over the same data. Now let me talk about how that works. All right, so on the next video, I wanna to talk to you about my favorite subject that makes Faircom database unique. It's the binary buffer. That's so exciting.
It sounds so stupid, but anyway, it is fun. So it's, it's, it's the secret sauce. So the next video, stay tuned.